Hi, this is Adrienne from Sew PDF, and today I want to talk to you about knit fabrics. We're going to talk about some of the terms that are used to describe knit fabrics and how to evaluate the fabrics to know if they are right for your project or not. We're also going to talk about a variety of specific types of knit fabrics and their characteristics. So these days, a lot of fabric shops are online only. So it's important to know what the various terms they use to describe the fabric mean so that you have a good idea of what you're getting when you purchase a fabric. Now, some of you may wish to shop in person at a shop that allows that, and that's great as well, but it's also going to be helpful to learn these terms um, as you're searching through fabrics and asking for help at a shop. One of the most common ways for fabric to be described by a shop is by its weight. Now the weight is literally how much the fabric weighs. It's measured either in grams per square meter or in ounces per square yard. Grams per square meter is often shortened to GSM. Now the weight of a fabric is affected by a number of factors and it's not always tied to how thick or thin the fabric is because it's also affected by how densely the fibers are knitted together it's affected by the weight of the, the specific type of fiber that's being used to knit the fabric together. And it's also affected by how thick or thin the individual fibers are that are being knitted together. So for example, if a thick but very lightweight fiber was used to knit a loosely knit fabric, so like a loose sweater knit, that might weigh less than a densely knitted heavier fiber that actually is a thinner fabric to work with. So for example, here we've got two different types of cotton Lycra. Now Lycra is actually a brand name, uh, like Velcro is a brand name of hook and loop tape. So when you see Lycra, it's, it's spandex is the actual term. Um, you may also see elastane, which is on another brand name. So spandex is the actual type of fiber, whereas the other terms that are commonly used are an actual brand name of that type of fiber. So this printed one is 260 grams per square meter or GSM. This solid here is 230 GSM. So they're fairly close together, but this one is denser and heavier than the solid is. Now, with a printed fabric, it is often going to have a little more stiffness to it um, because of the printing process and what the chemicals do to the fabric as well. So these two are more clearly very different weights. However, it's hard to compare them because this blue is 230 grams per square meter GSM. And this gray, when I ordered it, was described as a 10 ounce cotton lycra. Um, so because they are measured differently, it's hard to compare, but this is a much lighter uh, fabric than the blue is. Another term that's used to describe fabric is its drape. Now this isn't really something that you can measure, um, but you can describe whether a fabric has a lot of drape or a little drape. So this, as you can see, this fabric, it drapes very nicely. It just wants to hang straight down and it doesn't hold its shape very well. Whereas this, it has more volume when you let it hang and it holds its shape a lot better. You can see that how it's, it's sticking up a little when I put my hand under there. Whereas if I put my hand under this fabric, it just comes straight down. It doesn't want to hold up at all. And this is drape. So the opposite of drape is structure. And that's what this fabric has is called structure. So it doesn't have much drape, but it has a fair amount of structure to it, which means that it holds its shape fairly well. So when you're purchasing a fabric, you'll also often see it described by its stretch. We're going to talk quite a bit more later about how to measure the stretch of your fabric. Um, but what you'll often see listed is whether it is four-way or two-way stretch. So this fabric 
does not stretch in this direction. But if you turn it, it stretches quite a bit in this direction. So this is called two-way stretch. So basically they consider stretching to the right and stretching to the left, two different directions. So that's two-way. If it also stretched the other way, then it would be four ways, this way and this way, but it doesn't have any stretch in this direction at all. So this would be called two-way stretch. Something that a lot of people don't know, and actually I just found out, is that four-way stretch, technically, if that, for that term to be used to describe a fabric, should mean that it stretches both horizontally and vertically at the same time. So it's hard to show, but when you're wearing something like leggings, you need the fabric to be able to stretch vertically and horizontally all at the same time, because it's got to be stretching up your body and across your body all at the same time. So some fabrics will stretch in both directions, both horizontally and vertically, but not at the same time. Uh, you'll find this more often with fabrics that have differing amounts of horizontal and vertical stretch. Um, so if it's got just a little bit in one direction, then most likely it will not stretch in both directions at the same time. So before we move on to specific types of fabric, I want to talk about the word jersey. A lot of people think that jersey is a very specific type of fabric, but in fact, jersey is a very general term that's used to describe pretty near any simple knit fabric that can be used for t-shirts and, and things like that. Um, it's a smooth fabric on both sides, and it's generally referring to a single jersey, which is knitted on a single set of needles which means that it has a right side and a wrong side. There is one side that is that where you can actually see the stitches and then the other side where it's a little bit, it's got a little bit of a brushed finish to it. Now, there are double jerseys, which are knitted on two sets of needles and they don't have a right side. Both sides are the right side. Um, but in general, most people when they use the word jersey are talking about a single jersey but jersey can vary in the type of fiber that's used. It can be made out of cotton, bamboo, rayon, modal, um, even like a merino wool, uh, hemp. It can be made out of all kinds of different fibers and it has all different types of characteristics as well. It can be drapey, it can be structured, it can be dense, it can be light, it can be all types of characteristics. Um, but the main thing that they all have in common for a jersey um, is that it's relatively the same on both sides. Um, it's not going to have like loops on one side like a French terry would. Um, that's a different category of knit fabric. Okay, so getting into specific types of fabric, we're going to start by talking about cotton. Now one thing to note is that a lot of people ask for 100% cotton when they're looking for a specific type of fabric. What they don't realize is that 100% cotton can be either a knit or a woven fabric. So this here is a 100% cotton interlock. So that's it. That's a 100% cotton knit fabric, um, which is also called interlock. So this has nothing but cotton in it. It doesn't have any spandex, which a lot of knits do have spandex, but this one doesn't. And all of the little fibers are knitted together. That's why it's called a knit fabric. Whereas 100% cotton woven fabric, the fibers are woven together, um, which doesn't lend itself to stretch. A knitted fiber will stretch, but a woven fiber will not stretch. So to note about the spandex, the difference is typically not in the amount of stretch you get, but in the, in the recovery. So this is another term that's used to describe the characteristics of knit fabric is its stretch recovery. So the stretch amount is how much it can stretch. So how far you can get it to stretch before it just won't go any further. As you can see, I can stretch this pretty far, but when I let it go back, it doesn't hold its shape very well. It doesn't go back. So this fabric, this little piece here that I just stretched, is now wider than it was before I stretched it. Um, and this is the difference that spandex makes. 
So those little 5% or 8% or however much is in, in it of the spandex fibers that are woven, sorry, that are knitted into your fabric um, are what allow it to go back to its shape after you stretch it. So this is a cotton lycra. And it goes right back. I can feel the difference. It's harder to see on camera, but this just doesn't, it doesn't recover the same way. Um, and when you're sewing with it, it will tend to expand and get bigger. So another common type of cotton knit fabric is a cotton lycra French terry. So the, the blue that I showed you before the solid was a cotton lycra jersey. Um, and we talked about jersey before. This is a cotton lycra French terry. So the difference is that it's got a bunch of little loops on the back side that make it extra soft and cozy on that side. So French terry comes in a lot of different um, thicknesses. Um, it also comes with a lot of different um, stretch percentages and different fibers used to make it up. French terry, like Jersey, is a category. Um, so you, there are French terries made out of all kinds of different fibers. Um, this is a common one. This is a cotton lycra French terry. Um, but then it will also come in blends with polyester or just a, just a polyester lycra French terry. It comes in all different types of fibers and the stretch percentage will vary a lot more than it does with a jersey. A jersey is typically nearly always quite stretchy, like it will expand by at least 50%. Whereas a French terry, there are some that come with no stretch at all. There's a lot of two-way stretch French terry, so it will stretch horizontally, but not vertically. Um, and then there's, when it's got lycra in it, a cotton lycra French terry, it's usually going to be a four-way stretch, very similar to cotton lycra. So before we move on to some other categories of knit fabrics, I want to talk some more about types of jersey. Um, so typically, um, fibers such as bamboo, modal, uh, rayon, they're all going to be a very drapey jersey. This is a modal, but you have to be careful because this green here is also modal, um, but it's a heavier weight modal. Um, so it, some of this just takes experience in knowing what the fibers typically do and how the different weights will affect it. Um, so this is going to be a lighter weight modal, and this is a heavier weight modal that is thicker, denser, and it's got less drape to it. In the same vein, this is a normal bamboo jersey. I love to sew with bamboo jersey. It's very, very, very soft, very stretchy. Um, and it holds up very well to wash wear. This is a heavy, heavy weight bamboo. Um, so this is a very, very heavy fabric and you can see that it doesn't drape quite the same as the purple did. So this is a rayon jersey, which again, like bamboo, is very soft, very stretchy. It doesn't tend to hold up as well as bamboo does and it often is blended with polyester um, so you have to watch with polyester because polyester blends tend to pill a lot so quite quickly with a polyester blend i usually find um, it'll get those little pills uh, like looks like a lint on your fabric so speaking of polyester there are a lot of different types of polyester jersey as well this one is called DTY, which is a drawn and twisted yarn. It's very, very soft. It feels warmer than the bamboo or the modal um, or even the rayon. Um, and you'll find that with polyester, it doesn't tend to breathe as well as some of the other fibers. And so it will feel warmer on your skin. Um, it will maintain your temperature and it will be sweatier in warmer weather as well. So this is a DTY. This one is an FDY, which means fully drawn yarn. So there's 
lots of different types of polyester jersey. This one is a lot more smooth, cool to the touch. Um, it's got even more drape to it than the DTY does, but the DTY also has a fair amount of drape to it, especially if I unfold it here. It's got a fair amount of drape to it. Now I don't have a brushed polyester, which is a very common also type of polyester jersey. Um, there's a single brushed polyester, and then there's a double brushed polyester, also known as DBP. Um, and this is a very popular type of fabric um, because it's a lot less expensive than things like bamboo, um, but it's got that softness and drape to it. But again, being polyester, it is less breathable than a bamboo would be. Another type of polyester jersey is called ITY, or Integrated Twist Yarn. And this is again an, a drapey, high stretch knit. There are lots of other types and I can't go into all of them, but if you come across one that you haven't seen before, uh, you can ask the fabric company for more information and I'm sure they'll be happy to tell you what kind of drape and stretch it has. I've got a couple more blends to show you with some different types of, fa of fibers. Um, this is a merino bamboo blend jersey. Um, it does have spandex in it, so it's got nice stretch and recovery. Um, but it feels scratchier, um, more like a wool than, than a bamboo jersey would. This one here, same thing, um, but it's a lot heavier weight. It's a hemp blend. So it's a hemp jersey, I believe a hemp cotton blend. Um, and so it is a little scratchy, um, but not as much as the wool. And this makes really great pants, uh, especially for kids as the hemp fibers are so strong that the knees don't wear out as quickly, which is really nice. So I just wanted to mention about the French terry, um, that in Europe, this is called sweat. Um, so different parts of the world do have different terms for some of these fabrics. I've tried to include them where I know them, but I don't always know the different terms um, in the other countries. But I do know that in Europe, French terry is called sweat um, because it's typically what you would make a sweatshirt out of. So before we move on to some other types of knits, I'd like to talk about the different projects that you can make with Jersey and French Terry. As we've discussed, Jersey can be anywhere from drapey to structured and in between. So for a Jersey with a lot of drape, some good projects would be dresses, tops that are maybe fitted up top, but looser in the, in the body. You could make loungewear, uh, such as comfortable loose fitting pants, underwear work well with with a knit with more drape because it's so stretchy so for a more structured jersey or french terry some good options would be fitted t-shirts so something that fits very close to the body almost compressive uh, leggings pants and other bottoms joggers sweatshirts sweaters cardigans a compressive sports bra something like that uh, even a structured dress um, a structured knit will make a much fuller skirt on a dress than a drapey knit will. And then you've got lots of jersey and French terry that's somewhere in between the really drapey ones and the more structured ones. Uh, for example, what I'm wearing here, this is a bamboo French terry. So it's got more drape than a cotton French terry does. Um, and it makes a really nice cozy dress, but it's still got some drape to it. It's not quite so structured. So next we're going to talk about ribbing. This is another category. So ribbing is knitted in a way that it's got these lines in between. So this is a chunky rib. This is actually a cuff fabric because um, I didn't have any other chunky ribbing. Um, ribbing is typically very stretchy, especially horizontally. It doesn't always have four-way stretch. In fact, I'd say most of the time it doesn't have four-way stretch. Um, unless it has spandex. So often when it has spandex, it does have the four-way stretch. This is a polyester rib, and this is a very drapey rib. Um, they actually call this uh, yummy rib. Um, I thought that was just the way that some shops were describing it, but it turns out it's actually a type of ribbing. Um, that's what the manufacturers call it, and so all the shops call it that as well. It's called a yummy rib. So it's very, very soft, and this is more made for, for making clothing out of than 
traditionally ribbing is used more so for cuffs and neck bands and things like that. This is a tube of ribbing. It's a very fine rib, so it's got very, very small ribs on it. Um, but ribbing often comes in a tube like this because of the way it's that it's knitted together. So next we've got a waffle knit fabric. So it's got that little waffle look to it. Um, so inst instead of ribbing where it's just a simple line, uh, it goes both ways, making these little squares in the middle. Um, so that's called a waffle knit. And waffle comes in wovens as well, so you have to be careful when you're ordering waffle. Um, this is a waffle knit with no spandex, so it doesn't have recovery, very good recovery, same as, um, same as an interlock, uh, jersey in cotton. Um, but you can find waffle knits with spandex in them. This is a nice soft waffle knit with spandex in it, so it's got a much better recovery to it. So to give you an idea of what types of projects would work well for a fabric with not a lot of recovery, such as a waffle knit with no spandex or an interlock knit, these types of fabrics work very well for oversized items that aren't going to really matter if they expand a little. Um, so something that's not really fitted in any area at all. Um, and I would often recommend if there's a neckband or cuffs to be using a different fabric with some spandex in it for those. But you could also make something that doesn't have any bands, uh, such as a pair of pajama pants with elastic waist um, and no cuffs at the ankle, just a hem. That sort of project would work very well for a knit with no spandex in it. So next we're going to talk about fleece. Um, I don't have a lot of different types of fleece to show you, but there are a lot of different types of fleece. This is a bamboo fleece. So it's very similar to um, a... French terry in the fact that it's soft like a jersey on one side, um, smooth, soft and smooth, and then it's fuzzy and soft on the other side, like a fleece. Um, so fleece um, is a knit fabric, uh, even a, a polar fleece, um, which is fuzzy on both sides and quite a bit thicker, um, is a knit fabric. Uh, it doesn't tend to have as much stretch, though, as other some other types of fleece do. Um, for example, bamboo fleece has quite a bit of stretch, at least in one direction. It's actually opposite of the direction that you would normally stretch. It's with the grain instead of across the grain. Most, most fabric that has stretch um, only in one direction will have the stretch horizontally. This fabric has the stretch vertically. Um, but you can turn it around and use it the other way. It works as well. Here are a couple of other types of fleece. This is a polar fleece. So you can see it's quite a bit thicker and it's fuzzy on both sides. And this is a micro fleece. So it's quite a bit thinner, but it's also fuzzy on both sides. So these types of fleece don't have a ton of stretch. It's got some in this direction, but not much recovery at all. Um, and none in this direction at all. And that would be the same with this one. Another type of fleece that I don't have on hand is alpine fleece. Uh, it's similar to bamboo fleece in that it's smooth on one side and fuzzy on the back side. And fleece can come, just like French terry, can come in a lot of different types of fibers and a lot of different stretch percentages. Some will have no stretch at all. And moving on to sweater knit. So a sweater knit is typically fuzzy on the outside or on both sides. Sweater knits come in a large variety of knits, whether they're loosely knit or a little more densely knit, but they're typically not really dense. They're kind of either loose to, to a medium knit. So this one is actually unknown fibers. I purchased it that way, not knowing what it was made of, out of, um, but it's most likely a polyester. Um, and I did make myself something out of this that has pilled a little bit, um, as polyester does tend to do. A lot of sweater knits are thicker, such as this cable knit. You can see it's it's quite loose. It's got, you can actually see through it when you lift it up to the light. So sweater knits can be loose or they can be a more of a, a medium knit with just a fuzzy finish. Next, we're gonna talk about athletic knits. So athletic knits come in a large variety of 
types as well. This, for example, is a fleece-backed athletic knit. Um, so it's nice and warm and fuzzy on the inside, um, but the outside is smooth. There are tons of specific types of athletic knits, and I can't go into all of them as that would take an, another whole course in and of itself. But there are plenty of companies that specialize in athletic knits that I'm sure would be happy to explain the different types that they carry. What all athletic knits have in common is that they're typically very stretchy and meant for making tightly fitted garments such as leggings, uh, sports bras, that sort of thing. They can also be very compressive, but not all of them are as much. Um, this is a athletic knit as well. And most athletic knits tend to be moisture wicking. So they're breathable and they wick the moisture away from your body um, so that you can work up in them comfortably. So this is a fairly compressive athletic knit. So it stretches a lot, but it snaps right back. Um, so when you're wearing it, it will hold everything in. As I mentioned before, good projects for athletic knits would be leggings, sports bras, tight fitted workout clothing, that sort of thing. But a lot of athletic knits also have a decent amount of drape and can make a nice dress. One thing to note about athletic knits, as a lot of them are made out of polyester, the vast majority are made out of polyester, is that a high quality athletic knit will not pill, um, but a low quality one will pill. Um, so you have to be careful about that. Um, if you're buying online, ask them if, if the fabric will pill. In particular, a fabric known as Suplex is a very compressive athletic knit, and I have used several brands and some of them pale badly and some of them don't. Very closely related to athletic knits, we've got Swim Knit. This is very cool to the touch. It's not as breathable, I would say, but it's made to get wet and then dry again very, very quickly. It's very stretchy. That was with several layers. If I stretch it with one layer, it should stretch even more than that. Yes, very, very stretchy in both directions. And when you're working with a solid swim knit, it's worth noting that the grain line will go one direction on one side and another direction on the other side, but both are, it doesn't really doesn't matter which direction you use it because um, it's got equal stretch in both directions and there isn't really a right side to it. But when it's printed, it's got a clear right side, obviously. One thing to note about swim knits um, is that they will often come with a rating for UV protection. So you can read the description or ask the fabric company what kind of UV protection the swim fabric has, and it should have a rating. So here are a couple of really thick fabrics. This is called a Ponty or Ponty Deroma. Um, you will often see it listed as. It's a very thick double knit. And this one only stretches in one direction. It's got a fair amount of stretch. But it is a thick fabric typically used for skirts, pants, and structured dresses. Similarly, scuba is also a very thick knit um, with stretch only in one direction. So two-way stretch, but it's quite light. Um, so in comparison, this fabric is very light, but it is quite thick as well. Here are a couple of textured fabrics. This one is called Jacquard. And Jacquard is both a woven and a knit fabric. Um, it refers to a fabric where the pattern is actually woven or knit into the fabric uh, versus being printed on top of it or em embroidered. So this is knit, this design here is knitted right into it and you can feel that it gives it a texture. So it has, it has quite a bit more texture than most knit fabrics do. This one is also textured. This is called Bullet uh, and it's also known as Liverpool. So this tends to have a decent amount of stretch, but it's got this little bumpy texture to it. Pointel is another type of knit that is knitted with little holes in it as part of the design. This one is in a diamond shape, 
um, but there are also pointels that have a chevron pattern through them and uh, among other options now we've got a stretch velvet so these are some scraps here but it's got that soft velvet texture to it it's got pretty decent stretch um, but most stretch velvet does tend to have poor recovery because it doesn't have spandex, spandex in it but there are exceptions this is a crushed stretch velvet so it's got that crushed look to it with the texture and this one I believe does have spandex in it so it's got much better recovery to it and finally we've got minky or chenille so this is a custom printed stretch minky so it's got good stretch in both directions again not the greatest recovery because it doesn't have spandex in it um, but it's very 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 soft on both sides and there are some companies that will sell minky that has no stretch to it soft fibers on both sides and then you've got this very common dimple dot minky um, also called chenille in some stores and this will often come without the dimple dots as well um, but it's got like fleece it's very similar to fleece in that it's got a little bit of stretch not a ton only in one direction and it doesn't have great recovery uh, minky especially this kind um, tends to grow it's very slippery to work with so it requires a lot of pins and it tends to grow after you cut it the pieces tend to get bigger as you work with them here's a closer look at some minky which also comes in some other embossed patterns sometimes this is a chevron embossed minky and you can see it's got these little furry fibers on it so it's super soft again it's got got a little stretch to it but it does tend to expand and it does tend to shed a lot there's <laughs> fibers coming off of it all the time when you cut it um, which is something to watch out for because it can be a problem for people with respiratory issues sometimes I do recommend a mask while working with it often sewing patterns for knit fabrics will require a minimum stretch percentage or recommend a specific stretch percentage I'm going to show you how to measure the percentage of stretch that your knit fabric has so this can be done with any ru ruler or cutting mat, but we also have an easy printable ruler that you can use. First, I'll show you how to do it with a regular ruler. So you're going to hold the fabric in a specific section. So right now I'm holding it in a four inch section. Then I'm going to stretch it as far as I can comfortably do so. So it's stretched from four inches to about six and a half inches if it's stretched to six that would be 50 percent so we're looking at more like 60 to 65 percent but you'd have to do the specific math to get that number what makes it even easier is to use a printable ruler like this so again i'm going to hold a section of fabric and now it doesn't actually matter what the specific measurement is because it's got all the percentages marked for me. I'm going to stretch it and it goes to about 60% easily. I could probably get it yeah up to about 70% if I stretch really hard but you don't really want to push the limits of your stretch percentage because then whatever you make may fit quite tightly. Now stretch recovery is whether or not the fabric goes back to its original shape after you stretch it so I can stretch it to 70% and it will go right back to the same width that it was at because this fabric has spandex in it with excellent stretch recovery if I did the same thing with a fabric without spandex in it with poor stretch recovery then it would end up being wider after stretching than it was originally before we move on to sewing with knit fabrics, I wanted to show you while I've got the fabric up close, how to determine the right side of the fabric and to see the grain line. 
So the grain line, just like woven fabrics, is going to be parallel to the selvage. The selvage, just like woven fabric, has got often got holes and threads in it. And it's, so it's it's the factory finished edge, not the cut edge. And knit fabrics, a lot of them like to roll. The spandex in it makes the edges roll when you cut it. And they will actually roll, most of them, towards the right side. So this is the right side of the fabric. But even if you've got a fabric that doesn't roll, it's usually fairly simple to find the right side. You're just going to stretch it, and it makes those lines pop right out. So you can see those lines running vertically that are the grain line of the fabric. So when you stretch the wrong side, you can see them as well, but they're not quite as obvious. There's more of a brush finish on the wrong side. Whereas the right side, those lines are quite obvious. I hope that the things we've covered in this segment will be helpful to you as you shop for knit fabrics and evaluate them to know which projects they will work for best.